question before with all the jellyfish that we saw in Melbourne. What eats jellyfish? Well, the turtle is the main predator of the jellyfish. And some have deduced that the increase in jellyfish in tropical waters in Australia may be because of the decline of turtles. But that's very much a stipulation at the moment. Their diet, well, jellyfish, seagrasses and seaweeds, you'll find them eating turtle grass, funnily enough. Um, shellfish, crabs and even uh, squid is one of their favourite diets, if they can get a hold of them. But their life cycle is one of the most interesting life cycles I think I've ever, ever studied. So they start off with these little tackers. Obviously, the, the female lays a nest in the sand, and you have all these little tackers uh, emerging out of the sand. Incubation period, 45 to 75 days, depending on the species. And what's really interesting is that the temperature of the nest determines the sex. So they'll either all be male or all be female, depending on the temperature. And they generally hatch at night, although sometimes nature plays a bit of a cruel joke and uh, you get a bit of a late afternoon storm and they'll come out then, which uh, increases their mortality rate significantly. So here's the little tacker. They come out of the, uh, out of the sand and they head on down to the beach. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things trying to eat them on the way. So out of 115 eggs on average for a green turtle, maybe 50 will make it to the sea. These are, of course, gross uh, approximations. To five days, maybe 10. Sexual maturity, maybe one. The latest research suggests maybe 0.5 is a better uh, sort of statistic there. So very huge mortality rate. A lot of them, uh, a lot of them uh, end up as food for all the sharks, birds, and all the predators that uh, eat them. The crabs do a lot of damage just as they uh, go on down the beach. Once they get in the water, they're a little bit more mobile, but of course the fish and the sharks are still there as well. So, and even crocodiles uh, will, will get in there as well. Everything just waits at the, uh, the beach, basically just waiting for them to come on down. But if that one does make it to open ocean, it will swim for about five days without eating and get to the open ocean where there's less predators and it has a much better chance of survival. Then, like all turtles, they'll go through uh, a bit of an adolescent stage. Okay, they'll go through the teenage years. We all know what that's like, don't need to describe it. But then, after uh, a while, many, many years in fact, about 30 to 40, uh, they'll reach sexual maturity and the females, we don't really know much about the males, but the females will do a U-turn and they'll turn around. Now, they could have swum, this is the furthest recorded thus far, 22,000 kilometres from the place they were born, they're going to turn around and they're going to swim all the way back to where the place they were born to lay their eggs. Now, why on earth would you swim with 22,000 kilometres halfway around the world to get back to the beach where you were born? There's plenty of beaches on the way. You could just lay eggs there. Why would you go all the way back to the one where you were born? Anybody? It's a really important question, though. Why would you swim all that way? Think of the mortality rate. Basically, they know it's safe, yeah. They survived. So wherever their mum laid their eggs is obviously doesn't have many predators and is a good spot to lay your eggs. So it makes evolutionary sense to go back to where you were born. So they needed a little technique to do that because obviously 22,000 kilometres, how do you find your way home? That's a long way. And remember that you were about a day old when you left there. So it's a long way. For many, many years we didn't know. We thought maybe uh, really good visual uh, smells. Uh, a lot of people actually thought it was celestial navigation. They were navigating by the stars. But the latest research is that they have a magnetic compass installed in their head, just like a lot of migratory uh, seabirds as well. They basically have an iron ferrite in, inside a little tiny sack that's full of hairs and the hairs uh, deduce which way the iron ferrite's moving and therefore they basically have a compass. The latest research in the last six months suggests that they actually see this visually, which I'm quite interested to figure out how they figured that out actually, but uh, we're getting the research as it comes out. Now of course, just before you get home, the inevitable happens, some male comes and jumps on your back. And, of course, that whole thing goes on. Then she hauls herself up onto the beach at night. If she does it during the day, she'll die from dehydration. So she'll do it at night. And if she doesn't leave before, uh, before sunrise, she will die of dehydration. So it's quite a risky business being an old female turtle. 
she'll lay her eggs on the, uh, on the beach and the whole process repeats itself, of course. So it's a really interesting life cycle. They have uh, swimming halfway around the world and then coming all the way back to, to the place that they were born. Now on to some, some different creatures you probably haven't heard of. Yes, ma'am? After she lays her eggs, you know what? She, just, uh, she doesn't swim 22,000 kilometres, no. She will generally hang around uh, a 1,000 kilometre radius and she will continue to go back and, uh, and lay eggs up to a ripe old age of up to 150. Mm. So that's why the sexual maturity takes to 40 years. So they still have another probably 100 years of reproducing after that. But different species vary. Always to the same spot. Always. Please, folks, if I... If you have any questions, shout out, because what will happen is I haven't described it properly and there's 20 other people in the room who are thinking they're think, uh, still confused as well. So please, shout out if I haven't explained something correctly. Now on to echinoderms, which is an interesting uh, group of animals that not many people know about. These are called sea cucumbers or bechtemur, and they have a really rich history in Australia. The first export item ever exported out of Australia was these, uh, bechtemur, sea cucumber, they're a, a, an aphrodisiac in Asia, sell for about $40 a kilogram. Now, the Macassans were the first to export them out of Australia, and that was back in the 15th century out of the top of Australia. They were Indonesian fishermen, come down, fish these bechtemur, boil them up in big pots, and then take them back to Indonesia. And this is, of course, well before Europeans ever set foot in Australia. Now, these are the cuddliest creatures you will find underwater. I make sure I give one a cuddle whenever I see one. Totally harmless, can't do you any harm in the world, and they're a very important creature, and I'm actually really against the fishing of these creatures because they are the vacuum cleaners of the sea. They eat all the mouldy, uh, sort of algae-ridden, yellow-green, disgusting sand, and they spit out pure, clean white sand out the other end, of course, digesting the plant matter as it goes through their digestive tract. So where these guys are over fish, all the sand is yellow and green and really disgusting. So they're very, very important creatures to have around. Now, they are related to the sea star, and there's five-sided symmetry in there. Just, just trust me on that one. And another really interesting thing about the sea cucumber is its little relationship with a fish called a pearl fish. Now, this little fish, he's only about a centimetre long, actually lives up the bum of that creature. Now, why... Why would you live up in that creature? Why? There's only two things you need in life as an underwater creature. You only need two things. Can anybody guess the first one? Food. Okay. So going through that digestive tract all the time is lots and lots of good food. So you've got all the food you can have in the world. You only need one other thing. Protection. Exactly. And pretty much you can deduce any any behaviour of underwater creatures, they're striving for those two things, food and protection. Nothing eats the sea cucumber besides humans, and so it's a very, very safe place to live. And uh, definitely, if you ever see one, make sure you give them a cuddle. They're really, really cute. Feather stars, also in the echinoderms, they look just like a, a, a plant living on the side. At night, this creature will crawl around. It will eat. It will look, uh, look like a really, really weird uh, sort of... a uh, how would you say, sort of like a, or almost like a crab. It has like almost claws and stuff. But then during the day, it just...